Now, this video is supposed to be used as an epilogue to the article I wrote for the Aquila magazine. If you have not read that yet, I implore you to go check that out first before coming on here, as a lot of information I'll be covering might be a little bit hard to digest. Thank you in advance. Now, saying competitive gaming is popular would be a massive understatement to the size of the industry that has taken rise in recent decade. Simply put, competitive gaming, or esports, is a video game that is played for spectators by professional gamers, and those games played are called esports titles. Games such as League of Legends and Counter-Strike, which I mentioned in the magazine article, but I was only limited to those two because of word counts and simplicity. Those aren't even scratching the surface of the amount that are taking part, starting from Overwatch, to Rainbow Six, to Rocket League, to Dota, to Hearthstone, to PUBG, and even fighting games such as Super Smash Bros. All these games, completely different in their genres, have one thing in common. They are worthy enough to pack stadiums, and are worthy enough to be watched by millions of others online. However, the esports industry does not run by itself. They are mostly ran by tournament organizers such as ESL, the Esports League, DreamHack, and other companies. And those companies are heavily sponsored by other businesses such as Logitech, Intel, HyperX, which is a headset company, and even other examples such as Audi and Visa. And with their help, they set up different events where teams can enter and compete in qualifiers, or can be invited if they are a notable squad. And it's a lot of pressure because, first, TSM must do better than CLG or else this move will have, you know, a really awful ending for me and for TSM. So the first thing I was thinking was like, wow, there's a lot of pressure. And then the second thing is, wow, I love pressure. And if you ever dreamed of being on a notable squad, you need to be the best of the best. And with all the money being put into the esports scene nowadays, many people have dedicated their lives in order to be the best at whatever game they enjoy. Those who are good enough to be noticed by an organization are picked up in order to be part of a team. Just like regular sports, players are bought around and traded pretty much regularly, so organizations can have the best rosters possible. For example, Cloud9, a very popular esports organization in North America, has a variety of teams for a variety of games, from League of Legends to Dota, paying the players on those teams. And paid, they are. Way more than you would actually think. As of now, the set amount of money given to players per month has been shrouded in a mystery, as many are not allowed to say, but the number has been rumored to be as high as $17,000 per month if the team is consistently playing high. And there are counts of tournament winnings as well. So if you're consistently winning tournaments, and you're consistently getting paid, you can get paid a million dollars per year. Pretty interesting, right? Well, trust me, that is in the half of it. Most of these tournaments that players enter are known as LANs, or local area network tournaments, where players can compete on computers or consoles supplied by the organizers in a studio or other building. While those are typically used for group stages, which cuts the amount of teams competing in half, they are followed by the playoff stages that take place in a stadium or other large venue, where spectators can come and watch live. An example of this type of tournament would be I Am Oakland, which hosted the League of Legends and Counter-Strike tournament in November 2016 at Oracle Arena, where the center court was made into a stage to accommodate two teams playing on 10 computers at the same time, with large TV screens strung across them and shown into the crowd. Other types of tournaments include leagues, where players can play with their teams from home and compete with other teams online. Then the top six teams with the best records in each division, North America and Europe, with other countries lumped in the mix like Australia and South America, can qualify for the land portion. They're like football and basketball seasons, if you will, and those leagues can last about 12 weeks and normally have smaller prize pools, around 500,000. Another, and they win the round off that, you have to be kidding me, that is the most insane round! So you're probably wondering why some games have professional scenes to them, and why some others do not. Most PC games, and even console games, have had their pro scenes to them, with their best players competing in teams or by themselves in genres such as fighting games. Call of Duty has seen its rise and fall into a competitive scene, and even games such as Warframe has seen land tournaments, with prize pools being low as 20 grand. Small communities, sure, but still with competitive scenes nonetheless. So why do we see small games like those have pro scenes, but other large titles do not? Why don't we see ESL Mario Kart or Elite Tetris? And most importantly, why do you have millions of people across the globe taking times out of their day to watch these events? Well, it mostly comes down to the nature of those games and if they meet the criteria of being esports ready and spectator friendly. What makes the large esports titles like Dota 2, League of Legends, and Counter-Strike so massive is because of a few things. How easy can a spectator follow what's happening? Are the stakes high? Can an audience feel a level of tension? And is the game balanced enough to become an eSport? Alright, so I'm going to show you a clip from the popular game Overwatch. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then it's a really fun game. It's like $40 on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. So if you ever want to try it out, I should just get it because it's a really fun game. But I'm getting sidetracked. 
So essentially, Overwatch is a small league set up right now where different cities have different teams with them, kind of like football and basketball. So you have Seoul Dynasty, San Francisco Shock, etc. So this particular matchup I'm showing you is a match between San Francisco Shock and Seoul Dynasty, and there is a crowd watching. A small one, because this is just one of the regular games, but nonetheless, I wanted you to watch this clip and see what you might notice about it. And go. How would you miss Miro who dies here and now you're not going to be able to raise him back up? It's a huge advantage for the shark. You have your own Valkyrie as well. Dragon Blade from the sky. Dive Bomb works out and maybe makes found the kill. Your res is right back up. Yeah, he's got Valkyrie. So again, this Dragon Blade not protected by Transcendence and also going to be covered up. Sneaky though's got to be careful. There's going to be pressure down. San Francisco three on the point. Oh, they've got control. The Dynasty have to get there as soon as possible. But Flutter just gets booted by the Diva. Butting down the Sleepy. And the punch in the face from Nomi. The lack of respect is there in body, mind, and soul and now the time is gonna tick down just the one player who is Miro now Jayhawk's trying to get there I can't believe what we're seeing it's two to one in this series come on San Francisco shock have taken so what were you able to notice about this clip you probably were able to somewhat follow what each player is doing fluidly. That is because good esports titles will always have a small number of players on each team, which means the cameraman or observer can easily watch what's happening and the spectator can spectate everything fluidly. And there is a level of tension, and while people that don't play Overwatch can't fully appreciate that level of tension, notice how the crowd cheers as San Francisco pushes onto the point and they take the map away in a best of five series, bringing it to two to one. Very crucial in order for winning the entire thing. And while this clip may not show it that well, characters, items, gear, etc. are normally bounced in all esports titles, which means one thing. Games are typically like chess. The better player will, most of the time, win. All these elements combined is what makes esports a watchable experience and an enjoyable one at that. Goes in. He's gonna find the solo kill, almost the double. On the clock, make him come to you. Put the screws to oh, oh my no. lord. This it's it's out oh it's my god! Over. It is over! MVG Salem is your EVO 2017 champion. But with the rise of esports, there does lies a question, and that will be if it'll ever surpass regular sports and viewership someday. Millions are watching online, millions of dollars are being put in, and millions of people around the world are trained to become esports players someday. But even with all of that, it will vary if esports will ever get the same recognition as traditional sports. Even in recent decade, people have been rejecting it as being a hobby, even with the viewership numbers that have been coming in. This is just, it's video games. It's, it shouldn't be on a sports network. It's video games. It is, by the way, it's not sports. Did you know, Colin, you might just have a point there. After all, you're just watching someone playing a video game, right? But you use that same logic, and why do we appreciate regular sports? If esports is just watching someone play Counter-Strike, or Overwatch, or Dota, or League of Legends, what have you, then isn't basketball just shooting balls into a hoop, or soccer is kicking a ball into a net, or track running across pavement, etc, etc? Both esports and traditional sports have their own quirks that make them separate entities, make them separate things, and both make them enjoyable experiences for both types of people. And both sides of it, esports watchers and traditional sports watchers, might find something in the other genre. But inside of that comes Rez. He takes down Rain behind the smoke and get right closes it. And with that being said, I implore you, if you've never seen an eSport ever in your life, then please sit down, relax, get comfy, watch Twitch.tv, find a game you like, find a team from your region, and experience the hype for yourself. And who knows? You should mind enjoy it. Hollywood is doing some serious work. I don't know where this guy is, but TSM are holding on by the skin of their teeth. In. We're down to the top 10 here. Look at this one. Faye's still up. TSM still up. Cloud9 sitting pretty here too. I'm staff writer Christian Crother for UPA's Aquila Magazine, and thank you for watching. The X is a it needs to do some damage, but right now, Doobie dropping like flies at GG. It's done. Blackwood will be the first team. The first base is a trend. He's going to hit the ground there. It's cold. Oh! What? A jumping double from Cold! What is there going on right now? How does he do this? Cold has saved Luminosity with the all play. Unthinkable scenes there on the B apartments. They needed a huge play, but that was something I'm never going to see ever again. Ridiculous.